Assalamu alaikum, I pray inshallah all of you are well. Here we are, day four of the first ten days of the days of the Hijjah, the greatest days of the entire year. And no days in which good deeds are more beloved to Allah than these days of the Hijjah. Uh, day four, okay, what's our reminder today for? Our reminder today for is to think about um, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Of course, the the entire Hajj journey is really an enactment in many ways of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his struggle. Uh, the things, of course, that the, the Hajjaj are doing in the Hajj resemble, reenact in many ways, uh, that struggle, that legacy, the sacrifice of Ibrahim al-Islam. What makes Ibrahim al-Islam so unique in this case, and also for us back home, uh, in everything that we're doing, in fact, in these 10 days, is that Ibrahim al-Islam was, uh, was someone who was so beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his struggle and that narrative we have in the Quran, amazing about him, as a young boy uh, who was so disturbed by the fact that people are worshipping other than Allah, worshipping statues and stones that are carving for themselves and by themselves, that, you know, in the narrative it says that he, um, one day when the people were away, he went and he destroys all the idols. And so uh, when the people came back, they said, you know, who has done this to our our gods? And they said then, Ibrahim. We heard of a young boy speaking about them, meaning not in a very good way. And he and, and they say he's called Ibrahim. And then they called Ibrahim, uh, alayhi salam, and uh, they asked Ibrahim, uh, Did you do this to our gods of Ibrahim? Uh, and Ibrahim says, but what, what Ibrahim had, had done, is that when he destroys the idols, he left the big one there, unbroken. And he left then the axe or the weapon you know, with him. And so um, he used it, of course, as a way of, of showing them. So when they said, uh, did you do this to our gods? He said that the big one did it. And asked them, meaning the smaller broken ones, if they're able to speak. And just that for that single moment, Allah in the Quran says, فَرَجَعُوا وَالْأَنْفُسِهِمْ they went back on themselves, meaning there was a sense of realization. However long it lasted, Allah knows best, but it was a sense of real, meaning they knew that this is this makes sense. And they said then to them to each other that you know you are the guys, you are the ones who are the wrong to us. And then then they went back uh, on themselves, meaning then they relapsed, went back to their previous way of thinking, and they uh, began to uh, you know go against Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then they said, you know, support your gods if if you if you support your gods, and uh, and they planned then to burn Ibrahim as some room in a fire, and then the narrative it continues from there. But if you think for a moment about what's happening here, so Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, destroys idols here, um, and there is of course a profound lesson for us as Muslims that you know in the in the landscape of of Haram, in the Kaaba, uh, when the thing, the Prophet when he when he came back into Mecca. He also destroys those idols. And we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And in Allahu Akbar, there's a kind of internalizing. You're saying Allah is bigger, Allah is greater. It's not just physical entities as in idols that, uh, that you know people need to break and, and worship only Allah alone. But what about the idols, the other idols that we have that are holding us back? What about the idols of within us, the idols of ego? The idols of self, self pride. What about the idols of, of money and the idols of greed, the idols of consumers? What are all those other kinds of idols we have in our world today? Allah in the Quran says that you know, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ أَنْدَادَ يُحِبُّنَهُمْ كُبِلَّهَ That amongst people are those who take others as rivals with Allah. They love them like they're supposed to be loving Allah. And those who believe have a stronger love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, in these days, as you're doing your takbirat, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, to think about that, Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater. We say Allahu Akbar at important times, during times of greatness, during times of distress. Allahu Akbar, when we're climbing, you know, when we're going up ascending, we say Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, we say in the battlefield, Allahu Akbar. Um, but think about how that's internalized in us then. To what extent for us is Allah greater? Is there something else that had distracted us, kept us away? Uh, that you know, we kind of uh, at that moment, then for us, was Allah truly greater? Allah in the Quran says, Ya Yuhannas, ma gharraka bi Rabbi kal Karim. O people, what has uh, you know, 
distract, deluded you away from your Lord, Al Karim, the most generous one. And so, in these days of dhikr, in these days of, of tasbihat and glorifying of Allah, think about what you're saying. When you're saying Subhanallah, you're saying Allah is free of all defects, all perfection belongs to Allah, all praise be, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about how indebted we are as His creation, how indebted we are, Subhanallah, and how privileged we are uh, that Allah has afforded us the blessing of Iman, the blessing of faith, the blessing of belief and understanding. In, uh, in that we revere, revere only Him, that we remember Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that's that's an immense blessing, subhanAllah. You know, so every time you say that, internalize it. In fact, Ibn, Ibn Rajab says that in there's two kinds of people. The one who says the dhikr of Allah, but out of carelessness, meaning he just says, subhanAllah, astaghfirullah, but not knowing anything about what these, even, these words even mean. And then there's the other one who looks upon the creation of Allah and he says these things that are an amazement, right? You know, say, subhanAllah, like how wondrous is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you see something amazing, Allah's creation, for example, or a beautiful human emotion or, you know, something, just anything in your existence or yourself, you look at yourself and you say, subhanAllah, you know, um, and everything else, alhamdulillah, astaghfirullah, la ilaha illallah. Uh, you know, so may Allah make us truly of those who remember Him. Uh, there is another point I want to mention, but I think six, uh, almost seven minutes is enough time, inshallah. So I think I'll save it, inshallah, maybe for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, just carry on going, carry on going with, with the great the great thing that you're doing in these 10 days before the days are up. May Allah bless all of you. Jazakumullah khairan.